Hey everyone, welcome back to Take You Forward. So in the previous video, if you remember, we did uh, the memoization solution of the LIS video. In this video, we will be discussing the tabulation approach via the memoization, and then we will be moving across to discuss, yes, to discuss the rather bigo of an approach that you will found uh, that you will find in all the blocks and everything. Okay, so. Going back, going back to the recursive code, okay, going back to the recursive code, how do you convert this portion of recursive code into a tabulated code? That's a very big question. Now, I if you have been following this DP series right from the first, you know the rules. The rules are very simple. Write the base case and before that declare the DP of the same size. So I'll declare a DP of n plus one and then write the base case. Now, if you look at the code, what is the base case? We just have one base case, which is if index is equal to equal to n, we have to return a zero. So since we are declaring a DP of size n and n plus one and assigning everything to zero, since everything is already assigned to zero, we don't need to specifically write for the base case. I hope that makes sense. Next, write the changing parameters. So if I look at the code, these are the couple of changing parameters that we have. So write down the changing parameters in the opposite fashion. Strict rules, easy rules, which have which we have been following right from the start. So the index will be from n minus one to zero. The previous index will be from n minus one to minus one. But here is a catch: if it's a previous index and it is an index, what is the definition of previous index? The previous index. So can a previous index be n minus one always? No, a previous index will always start from index minus one because it cannot be beyond index or index itself. The name itself is previous index. So this is how you can have these kind of things. Next is copy the recurrence as simple as it can get. Copy the recurrence and make sure you uh, follow the coordinate shift that I taught you follow coordinate shift that I taught you okay just make sure you do follow uh, the coordinate shift that I taught you so what I'll do is I will uh, go across over here and uh, this is how uh, the code looks like and over here what I'll do is I'll do a zero and this is the index which I'll start from n minus one index greater than equal to zero index minus minus and I'll have the previous index right starting from index minus one till uh, previous index greater than equal to minus one and previous index minus minus perfect and now what i'll do is i will simply take uh, this portion and i'll copy paste over here once i've taken this now what i will do is i will be like okay let's convert this into a dp so remember whenever you convert it into a dp the coordinate shift has to be done so the second parameter will always have plus one because if you remember we stored the second parameter in plus one state over here this is the first parameter it is as it is and the second parameter goes into the plus one state perfect so we moved the second parameter into the plus one state over here uh, this will go off over here this will be dp of zero and instead of minus one it will be a plus one state so you just do a plus one once you have done this and if you try running this, you will see that this is indeed giving you the correct answer. No, it did not. Why? Because you are at n minus one and you're doing an index plus one. So make sure this is declared for n plus one because n means you don't have an nth row. So just make sure you have this. So as you see, it is giving time limit exceeded because we missed a greater than equal to over here. Uh, nevertheless, this would have greater than equal to over there. And this should be running fine. Perfect. So that's how you can convert this into a simple uh, sorted tabulated code. Now, now if you're following my DP lectures right from the start, you know the space optimization technique. Yes. Whenever you see something like index plus one, index plus one, what comes to your brain? Yes. Space optimization. So what you'll do is you will just space optimize this because in order to compute index, you're just requiring the next row just the next row. So please space, op uh, space optimize this by saying next row 
and you can also declare a current row of n plus one. If you don't understand this, it's not my fault uh, because you're watching the DPCs right from the between. This playlist is an extension, so please make sure go back and watch all the videos because this trick I have been teaching right from the first day. So next and current. At all the index, make it current. At all the index plus one, just make it next. That's the rule. At all the index plus one, just make it next. And once you've done, once you've completed the entire row, just do cur. Uh, sorry, just do next equal to cur. Right at the end of the day, you can return cur or next because both of them will be same, and that's what you return. So in this way, what I have done is, I have converted this code into something uh, which is if I if I show you. Uh, the time complexity is still big O of n square, but the space complexity has been boiled down to n into 2. Now, is this the best solution? No. The best solution uses a like, weird method, tabulation method. Like, I personally feel if you know this, you know this. Otherwise, you cannot intuitively write it. That is what I feel. So, it's a tabulation method uh, that you have to learn. It's a different way. So let's take a quick example and try to understand the tabulation method. So 5, 4, 11, 1, 16, 8. Okay. Let's take this array. Okay. And now what I'll declare is I'll declare a DP of size n. That is what I'll declare. I'll try to declare a DP of size n. Where, where? DP of i signifies the longest increasing subsequence that ends at index i remember this dp of i signifies the longest increasing subsequence that ends at index i for an example if i ask you what is the longest increasing subsequence that ends with 5 you'll be like the length is 1 definitely because before 5 i cannot have any 1 similarly if i ask you what is the longest common subsequence, uh, sorry, longest increasing subsequence that ends at 4? Again, 5 cannot be a part of it. So, you'll again say the length is 1. Similarly, if I ask you, what is the longest increasing subsequence that ends at 11? You can say 5 can be a part of it or you can say 4 can be a part of it. Both of them can be a part of it. So, I can say it can have a length of 2 because either 5, 11, either 4, 11. It can still have a length of 2, right? Next, you go to 1. Can I have a longest increasing subsequently? Any one before 1? 5 cannot be before 1, 4 cannot be before 1, 11 cannot be before 1. So, the longest increasing subsequence will be of length 1 again. 16. For 16, I can say, I can have 1 before 16. So that's one of the ways. I can say I can have 4 before 16. That's one of the ways. I can say I can have 5 before 16. That's one of the ways. I can definitely say I can have 5 and 11 before 16. So these are the 4. Like there can be a lot of other ways as well. Like 4, 16. Uh, like you can, you can figure out. But can I say the longest that I can have is. If I pick 5, 11 and then 16. So I can have a length 3. For 8, can I have 16 before 8? No. Can I have 1 before 8? Yes. So 1 and 8 can be together. Can I have 11 and 8? No. Can I have 4 and 8? Yes. So I can have 1 and 8, 4 and 8, 5 and 8. I can't see uh, more than length 2 that ends at over here. So I can still have a length 2. Thereby, I know all the longest like at 11... A length of 2 ends at 16 a length of 3 ends so if i know for every index this is this is the possible answer so can i say this is the lis which means i can have a sequence something like 5 11 16 or 4 11 16 for that reason i can have both of them as the length yes i can have both of them as the length so like both of them as the longest so I can have both of them as the longest increasing subsequence and the LIS will be the max of all DPIs, max of all DP of index where I ranges from 
0 to n minus 1 this is the formula but the funda is how do you compute this portion that's important that is that is the key so you figured out what's the uh, thought process behind this algorithm so now let's again uh, copy paste the same example of 5 4 11 1 16 8 and now let's try to figure out the dp okay so what i'll do is have a, a keen focus i know one thing for sure even if there does not exist any element before that i repeat even if there does not exist any element before that i know the length will always be one the max length will be one he itself itself so initially dp will have all the values assigned to one because he itself will be the maximum length okay for this guy which is index zero for this guy does it have any previous elements the answer to that is no so this will still stay as one let's move to the next index does this guy have any previous element the answer to that is yes this is the previous element but this five is actually greater so this cannot be a part of subsequence this cannot be a part of subsequence so it will still stay as one and i don't have any other previous elements apart from five let's move next when i move to second index this guy does it have previous elements yes these couple of guys are the previous elements can five can five become the previous of 11 the answer to that is yes five can become the previous of 11 if five can become the previous of 11 and if there is a subsequence that ends at five of length one can i say if i involve 11 the subsequence will be of length one plus one and that will be a length two because i know there is a subsequence that ends at five and is of length one so if i take that length if i take this length and if i add it to 11 i'll add one to this length which makes it two perfect this was a previous which can combine with 11 next previous is four again this is of a subsequence length one like i know there is a subsequence of length one LIS. There is an LIS of length 1 that ends at 4. So, can this be with 11? Yes. This plus 1 is 2. And there is already 2. So, no need to update it because I already have a length 2. Perfect. Let's move ahead. 3. So, I am moving ahead to this index. Now, I have a 1. Can this be a part with 1? No. Can this be a part with 1? No. Can this be a part with 1? No. So, no one can be a part with 1. So, 1 will be only having a length 1. Perfect. Let's move to the next. When I am at 4, when I am at 4, what do I have? I have 16. Okay. Can 5 be a part of 16? Yes. It can make 5 and 16. So, 5 has a length 1, adds a length 1, makes it a length 2. Can 4 be a part of 16? Yes. Length 1, adds 1. 2 is already there. Can 11 be a part of 16? Yes. I say 11 can be a part of 16. And 11 in itself is a length 2, which is 4 and like 5 and 11. So this length 2 can be a part of 16, makes it a length 3. So this can be updated to length 3. Realize since you stored the longest till 11 that helped you in attaching it and making it one more when it got a greater element got it that's how you get three can one be a part with 16 yes two but we already have better one so no need to take it that's how you figure for 16 next move to the next five you are at eight for eight can this be a part yes so length two for eight can this be a part yes length two for eight can this be a part no for 8, can this be a part? Yes. Length 2. For 8, can this be a part? No. So, eventually, you will get length 2 only. So, this is how you fill up the entire DP table. Once you have filled up the entire DP table, figure out the maximum and that's 3. And that is going to be your LIS. That is going to be your length of LIS. So, can I say, what am I doing? Can I say, I am actually uh, starting from index 0 and I am going on till index minus 1. That's what I am doing. I'm starting from 0 and I'm going till n minus 1. And whenever I'm standing at, let's say, 16, I checked for 5, 4, 11, 1. 
So I'm checking all the previous indexes. So can I say, I am checking all the previous indexes from 0 till index minus 1. And what am I checking? I am saying, can the previous be a part of mine? If it is, then the answer will be 1 plus whatever previous had. And I will store that in my current guy. But I need to compare that with whatever I am at current. I need to compare that. Whatever I have, and if the previous is smaller, if the previous is smaller, then just add one to it and then compare with myself. If it is greater, then I'll store it. And at the end of the day, the max of everyone will be my answer. So without actually uh, waiting, let's go back and try to code this up. So I'll just omit this off. And now what I'll do is I'll just declare a vector of dp of n comma 1. So all of these guys will be declared with 1. Next, I will go from 0. And I'll go until n. I will like i plus plus. Perfect. Now I will have a previous which will be from 0. And I'll go until i. And I'll be like previous plus plus. Perfect. Now, can I say if uh, array of previous is lesser than array of i? Can I say dp of i will be max of dp of whatever is there plus dp of previous? As simple as it can get. And once this dp of i is computed, can I store the max of all of them? I can. So, really, I can uh, store a max equal to 1 because I know that's the maximal answer. Max of maxi, comma, whenever all the dp of i is computed, and then I can return the maximum. That's how uh, this particular algorithm will be. And it's a very straightforward one. So yeah, again, why DP? Because you're storing the previous states. That's how you can easily do this LIS. Now, if I ask you the time complexity, again, if I submit this, you will see it will be giving you a TLE because the time complexity is uh, still n square. Yeah, if I talk about the time complexity, it is uh, still v go of n square. But the space complexity has now boiled down to be go of n. Now, this solution will be required if you want to trace back the LIS. If you want to trace back the LIS, this solution will be required. So, it's time that we now trace back the LIS. Okay. Now, we'll be learning how to print the LIS. That's very important. So, let's learn how to print the LIS. So, till now, we have understood how to figure out the length of the LIS. But what if someone comes up and says, hey, can you print me the LIS? Can you actually print the LIS? We can. What if uh, we apply some backtrack? Can we uh, print it? We can. So the backtrack that we will do is, what we will do is, as of now, we were creating a DP array. If you remember well, we were creating a DP array and we were initially saying everyone to be one. Right? Now let's create one backtrack array. Another array. Okay, you can you can call whatever uh, you can like, just name it as hash or something like this. So let's create one more array. Okay, and make sure everyone is assigned uh, whatever index you have. Make sure everyone is assigned uh, the index himself. So this hash will say this hash array will say who was the previous index to it. You'll understand. Like for an example, over here five. It does not have any previous so it will have one and it will say this five ends at like before five we had five itself so no one fine when we reach at four it will still be one and this five cannot be a part of it it cannot be a part of it so let's uh, keep it as one and this will also be staying as one now whenever we are at 11 what we do is we take five the value is one we add one and we update it to two is that what we do Definitely be updated to 2. Now remember, this 5 got before 11. Thereby, this was updated to 2. So can you say 11, before you, there was 5. So at 11, can you say before 11, there was this index 0. So please store index 0. So hash will say before 11, there was an index 5. Perfect, you have told it, right? Now let's move. Uh, so we are at 11, it was 2. Now we are at 4. 4 had 1, so 1 plus 1 would have been 2. You can update it or you cannot. It's still the same value. Perfect. Next, you go to 1. 
One says this cannot be, this cannot be, this cannot be. So it still stays as one. Next, you go to 16. It says that 5 can be a possible answer. So 1 plus 1 will give it 2. So this guy will be 2. So please update it 2. So what I'm saying is for the 16, before this there was 5. So let's update this to index 0. Perfect. Next, this is 4. 1 plus 1 would have been 2, which is already there. Next, we have an 11. It can also be a part. So this is 2. 2 plus 1 would have been 3. Perfect. Why don't you update it to 3? And if this guy is coming before 16, there is an index 2. So index 2 will be updated. Amazing. 1 cannot be an answer because 1 means 1 plus 1 is 2. And we already have a 3. So 1 cannot be an answer. Let's move to the next. We have 18. 5, can it be an answer? Yes. If I'm taking 5 as an, uh, like, sorry, this was 1, 6, 8, not 18, my bad. Yeah. So, for 8, can 5 be an answer? Yes. 1 plus 1. So, thereby, this becomes index 0. Can 4 be an answer? No, because we have already updated this to 2 while we were doing it 5. Can 4 be an answer? 1 plus 1, 2, same. 11, no. 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 16, no. So apparently, your hash array is storing something like this. And the maximum value you, you got was at this index, index 4. So you start at index 4, take up that value 16. Next, you go to the previous index. And you can easily get by hash, which is 2. So you go to 2. So at the second index, you see a value 0. So you go to 0. At 0, you see 0 itself. So you stop. So apparently index 4 has 16, index 2 has 11, index 0 has 5. So if you reverse it, it's 5, 11, 16, which is your answer. In this way, you can easily get your answer. So if I go back to the code, you just need to uh, create one more hash array. So make sure you just create a hash array of n size. And whenever you enter, just make sure hash is nothing but the index itself. Okay. And what you need to do at the next step is, just go across whenever this is getting updated so instead of uh, writing this you can simply write and and whenever this guy is greater than dp of i i know i'll update this to this portion at the same time i'll say hash of i to store the previous guy perfect and over here you can definitely keep the last index as 1 as 0 initially and whenever yes whenever dp of i exceeds maximum you can simply say maximum to be dp of i and the last index to be i so you have stored the last index now what you can do is you can simply uh, like take an index which is like you can just go on till while hash of last index is not equal to last index in this way you can just bump up and over here probably you can say int uh, lis and you know the this is the length right and lis of zero will be nothing but array of last index that's the last guy and over here what you can do is you can say last index to bump up to hash of last index and you can say lis of like you can probably keep an index equal to 0, index equal to 1 because the first index has been done. So index equal to whatever is at the last index. You can easily take it and you can just do a uh, just do an index plus plus every time you have taken it. So in this way, you can easily plug in uh, the values. But remember, if you do this, you will have everything in the reverse order. So the better way to do this is you can create a vector. Right, That's the easier way. And you can say temp dot push back initially array of last index and you can just keep on uh, pushing uh, temp dot push back array of last index and you can just at the end of the day you can say reverse temp dot begin of temp dot end that's what you can easily do it right and if i just uh, show you by taking a very small custom case which we were till now solving 5 4 11 1 16 8 and if i just run this uh, you will see 
uh, okay we we haven't printed it by the way so please print it as well if you print it you will see that the answer is coming absolutely perfect so we see that uh, so we see that we are getting our LIS as well as the length of the longest increasing subsequence. So you just need to backtrack by storing a hash and you can just backtrack and you'll get your answer. So this is how you can easily print the LIS as well. So guys, so guys, uh, what will be the time complexity? Uh, you know, this is uh, B go of N square and uh, this will be the length of the LIS. Whatever is the length of the LIS, that will be the backtracking time. So guys, I hope you have understood uh, the tabulation code, the space optimization code, then the algorithmic code, and then the printing of LIS. So just in case you did, please, please, please make sure you like this video. And if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to us. And yeah, with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in the next video where we will be solving LIS using binary search. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.